So you're talking about 200 volts you can put on this thing. And I would say, I mean, you're, you're actually uh, cooling water. Uh, the biggest limitation on, on that is probably the core, the cord. There's no pump or moving parts here. It's just a resistive element in here. Um, we're going to be dealing with a 300 volt pack. I'd be pretty comfortable putting 300 volts across that. And believe it or not, certainly in a resistive heating element, here or here, we don't have to worry too much that it's AC and we have DC voltage. Right. We don't care. So that's the, the thing. In order to hook it up to our two connections, the problem is we have to make the water flow. And so we need a, a water pump of some sort. Here's a little Bosch water pump that we got for something else. I guess we could use that with it. And we need a way of turning it on and off. We can't just wire this up to the pack and let it uh, make steam all day. And so we have a little relay here. Um, the problem is that's 1500 watts. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we need about three times that. I don't think two of these at 3,000 watts would actually heat the car adequately. Um, and so I don't think three of these would, or two, two of these would. We probably need three. About 4,500 watts would be overkill, but overkill is always appropriate. So two or three of these at 100 bucks piece, we're at uh, uh, probably 250 for two of these. Another $50 for this pump, which I don't know if it'll actually, it's kind of plastic, if it'll pump hot water without melting. Take the heat, yeah. uh, we don't have to pump much. A uh, liter or two a minute would be fine, but we do have to pump it. The big problem is this relay. These puppies on eBay start at about $65. Um, Tyco, Kilovac, I use them for all sorts of things. Um, one of the problems we had with the um, Speedster was using small relays, or uh, worse, uh, my adventures with um, SCR, Silicon Controlled Rec Fires uh, Relay, Silicon Controlled Relay, um, a semiconductor relay is that when we turn them off, they would stay on. Yes. And that's a failure <laughs> mode we don't want. No. Uh, the problem is, of course, um, the current and, and more the voltage um, that you have with a 144 volt pack or, or so forth. Um, when those relays open, they don't want to discontinue the current flow. There's a certain amount of inductance and leads that it wants to continue. And it'll cause a big voltage spike at the uh, terminals of the relay and often arcing. Our battery pack can produce enough power to arc and weld the contacts together. And so a light relay uh, or our SCRs would simply fail closed. Um, we've removed the switch power from them, but they're still on. And now we're applying um, battery voltage to a heating element in an uncontrolled fashion. Oops. Worse, it doesn't make a lot of noise. No, they're very quiet when they fail. Yeah, they're, they're quiet when they fail right up to the point where they explode or um, otherwise cause a fire. And so anytime you're applying your full pack voltage to any device, you need to use a very high quality relay that's capable of breaking that connection. And you do need um, it to, it to be able to switch it on and off. Not We would never hook this up. And So we got $65, about $250 in these, or maybe $375, another $50, a bunch of hoses to tie the pumps and these things. And we have to find a mounting space for a couple of these things. Um, it's kind of a false economy. Um, they are inexpensive, but we're probably looking at 450 or $500 using the cheap $100, $125 um, heater that you can get to warm your block. It will work. It'll have more connections, more things to spring a leak. Mm -hmm. um, what else will it have? Um, more size. Right, ultimately. Um, and um, so th this is the uh, 
economy a way to probably attack this project, but I'm wanting minimum room and maximum reliability. And so we're not going to use this at all. Um, if we were doing a 75 Datsun, um, I might go that way, but I probably wouldn't wind up with very good heat, and I probably would wind up having to revisit it a lot. This is another unit, and it's the one we're going to use uh, to simulate our engine cooling. This is a four kilowatt um, thing, again, made by MESDEA. I like the Swiss components. They seem to be doing a, a good job, and we get them from Victor. We, we get them from Victor at Metric Mind. Metric Mind, and um, the, uh, so far they've been a little cryptic to figure out, as all Swiss and German engineering mm -hmm. is, uh, but when I do figure it out, I kind of like it. Let's mm -hmm. see, uh, what did we pay for that thing, Brian? Uh, 730, 740 maybe, around in there. Okay, so it's, um, it's a half again as much money, uh, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, maybe more. Maybe more um, yeah. This is a little bit expensive. Um, let me see if I can find the sheet on that. Um, it was in here a while ago. Here it is. Yeah, this will operate from 200 to 450 volts. Mm -hmm. And it does uh, 4,000 watts. Um, 1,000 watts of electrical power converted to heat uh, in British thermal units is 3,412 and change, mm -hmm. if that means anything to you. So with a 4 kilowatt uh, thing, we have about 12,000 BTUs of heat uh, coming out of this thing. I'm comfortable that that, while well, it's not an internal combustion engine, that that's um, probably a, a sufficient amount of heat so. to heat this um, Mini Cooper Clubman with fair, fairly quickly and, and fairly well. More importantly, this has built into it a um, pick controller and switching system where I don't have to fool with a relay. Uh, we've got some wiring that connects to this. That I connect the pack voltage and a 12 volt on signal and this puppy takes care of the rest. Uh, applying the voltage, uh, not applying the voltage, and I can even get a fault signal out of this connector here uh, to indicate there's a problem. I'll, we'll probably wire up an LED or something mm -hmm. to that to indicate a problem. It's easy to add water to, which was another problem we were going to have with the other one, was we had to have some sort of reservoir. This has a reservoir with a heating element down in it, and um, we're going to fill that with a 50-50 mixture of glycol, antifreeze, basically, and water, and that'll uh, keep it from freezing um, down to a pretty low uh, area. And so despite it being um, $740 or so, um, I think this one, it, it'll work well. They're pack voltage, 200 to 450 volts. You can get them in different voltages, 100 to 250, 70 to 150, uh, 40 to 75 volts. Most of those are little two, three kilowatt things. Uh, um, so the 740 is the top of the line, four kilowatt unit um, that works on the 200 to 450 volts. Uh, our pack voltage, 100 cells. 100 cells, yes. We'll start at 360. 360. Uh, we're out of gas when it gets to 200, so this will be a good match. Mm -hmm. It'll put out plenty of heat. And um, so I think that's what we're going to do. But what I'm looking for here is not only overkill, um, but simplicity. I don't have the separate relay. I don't have the separate pump. The pump yeah. is built into this thing. Uh, the relay is built into this. Mm -hmm. it, here's the, the little right there, pump yeah. that's right there. And uh, so I see, Brain, you've already fashioned a little mounting bracket. We did. We've got mounting brackets and, and uh, everything. And we'll Where are we going to put this thing? We're going to put it uh, on the firewall, the passenger side footwell. Uh, right above the uh, steering unit in the engine compartment. Mm -hmm. I don't like to hear pumps. Um, are you gonna give me some rubber or something here? Yeah, what we've got is we've, uh, we're, we're, 
we're kind of famous now for using that uh, truck bed liner, and we've still got a bunch of it left. So we're going to isolate this. Uh, we've also, underneath, uh, put a little bit of that truck bed liner there to uh, uh, where it sits against the, uh, the, power, the power steering unit. Okay, so, so this sits on top isolated. of the variable 